Three, two, one, action. What's up, YouTube? I'm Dr. Matthew Tontat. I'm a board certified urologist, and we are here to cut through the noise in men's health. Today, we're tackling low testosterone, how it's diagnosed, uh, the treatment options, and what happens when you jump on or off of testosterone replacement therapy, TRT. Let's dive in. So before we dive into symptoms, I would like to quickly explain how testosterone production works because understanding this system will help you understand everything that follows, especially what happens when we intervene with treatment. Um, so I am simplifying here, but the brain, which is um, the brain, I'm referring to the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland, senses testosterone levels, then tells our testicles how much testosterone to make by sending a signal a hormone called luteinizing hormone. When luteinizing hormone hits your testicles, the testicles make testosterone. If there's too much T, the brain releases less LH. If there is not enough T, the brain releases more LH. And it's an elegant system that are, that's been fine-tuning itself for million, millions of years. And uh, your body is constantly adjusting testosterone production based on what it thinks you need. Now, keep the system in mind as we talk about what happens when we attempt to bypass it entirely with testosterone replacement therapy. Um, so, in terms of the causes and associations of low testosterone, here's where the language gets tricky, and it does matter. Uh, we talk about causes versus associations. A cause is where we have a specific mechanism for it. A uh, simple example would be like a genetic condition called Klinefelter syndrome. This is where the test, um, when you're born with this, uh, an extra X chromosome, chromosome, the testicles don't work well and um, they just don't make testosterone. So that's, um, that's a, a cause of testosterone deficiency or low testosterone. Another is someone who had a traumatic accident and had to have both testicles removed due to trauma or had a serious testicular infection on both sides. So both testicles have been removed. That is an obvious cause of low testosterone. Now, on the other hand, an, an association is when two conditions occur together, but we're not sure which came first or if they're directly connected. These are like obesity. Obesity is associated with low testosterone. But does obesity cause low testosterone or does low testosterone cause weight gain? It's probably both. And other associations like obesity include diabetes, cardiovascular disease, taking certain medications for long periods of time, including corticosteroids and narcotic pain medications, uh, chemotherapy, anemia, and low bone density. And, um, you know, the distinction between a cause and an associated Association matters because treating a cause might fix the problem. Uh, treating an association, well, that's, that's more complicated, especially when you look at associations like obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, metabolic disease. So next, I am going to review the symptoms of low T. These include low energy, weight gain, decreased libido or sex drive, uh, problems getting it up, reduced erectile function, irritability, uh, depressive symptoms, and these are nonspecific, meaning there's, there are many other causes and associations, um, but, you know, let's see if you have uh, low testosterone, which could be contributing to this, so we work it up. What do we do to confirm you have a low testosterone? Well, we get testosterone levels, and we need to get them in the morning, uh, and we need two morning testosterone levels that are low. We need two because uh, one could be a fluke and two confirms it. We get it in the morning because testosterone levels are normally highest in the morning and that's what our, our labs, our normal value is based on. Um, so what is considered low? Generally less than 300 nanograms per deciliter is considered low and um, that is how you get the diagnosis of low testosterone. That's generally when we will um, consider prescribing testosterone replacement. If it is low, you get two consecutive morning testosterone levels that are low. 
we check uh, some levels of some hormones from the anterior pituitary gland, luteinizing hormone and, and prolactin. This is to see if we can essentially blame the low T on the brain. Is the T low because the testicles are not getting enough signal from the brain to make t testosterone? Or is it because um, the testicles themselves are just not making enough t testosterone and the brain is sending appropriate signals? So, but in any case, it doesn't matter too much because whether it's the problem is the brain or the balls, um, generally it is on the table to consider testosterone replacement. So next we would do a basic set of labs, a prostate specific antigen, a complete blood count and a lipid profile. These are to test some blood work that can be affected by testosterone replacement. We'll talk more about that in the side effects. Um, in terms of treatment formulations, there's essentially three general options. One is a gel that you would apply daily. Uh, one is an injection that is given every one to two weeks. And one is a subcutaneous uh, pellet that is implanted just underneath the skin and that lasts three to six months. Each method has trade-offs and we do usually start with whatever fits your lifestyle and preferences and, and adjust as needed over time. The side effects <coughs> to know about, one is polycythemia, which is an elevated blood count. Uh, when, you take when you have higher testosterone, your body makes more blood and your blood gets thicker. And that's what polycythemia is. Uh, another potential risk is cardiovascular events. And this is related to possible higher blood pressure, higher cholesterol levels seen with uh, testosterone re replacement. Mood changes acne and oily skin, uh, prostate concerns, which is why we get the prostate specific antigen. That's the blood test we use to screen for prostate cancer. And um, this is because as, as urologists, what we have found is that we went to treat prostate cancer that has metastasized or spread outside of the prostate to other parts of the body. If we either chemically or physically castrate men, uh, bring their testosterone down to zero, then the cancer uh, shrinks. So we also, so if we bring the testosterone down and it shrinks the cancer, if we bring the testosterone up, does that promote cancer? And that's kind of, there's not a evidence that directly links the two, but because of, you know, the way we treat prostate cancer, when we give out testosterone, we wonder if the reverse could happen. But so that's just something we always counsel patients on in terms of the risks. Uh, the next side effect to know about is testicular atrophy. Uh, basically the testicle which is responsible, the testicles which are responsible for uh, testosterone production and sperm production, they kind of slow or shut those things down because net, we're getting testosterone from outside. The testicles are like, hey, we got enough of it. We, we, why are we working? We don't need to make it. So, so it kind of shuts down uh, testosterone and sperm production. So it can, uh, it will decrease sperm count. So if you're trying to conceive, testosterone replacement therapy is not for you right now. Um, when you give uh, testosterone from the outside, your testicles stop making their own. Use it or lose it. So um, now you're on testosterone. Uh, we've started a dose. We'll see you back in, within three months, and we'll be checking testosterone. We'll be checking a CBC, a lipid profile, a PSA, and then checking every six months after that if everything is stable. <clears throat> we usually target um, the middle of the pack range, the middle tertile, which is between something like 400 and 700 nanograms per deciliter. And uh, we're asking how you feel. Hopefully you found your sweet spot, you're feeling better, those things that you were having, um, fatigue, uh, decreased libido, decreased motivation, depressive symptoms, hopefully those are getting better. And now what? Well, now we just, generally, we keep the testosterone going. But what's the end game? Well, remember the testicular atrophy side effect, use it or lose it. Depending on how long you've been on testosterone replacement, your testicles have not had to make much or any. 
So they, your testicles will be smaller and squishier than they used to be. Um, do you have to stay on testosterone forever? No, not necessarily. Will your testosterone drop if you come off of testosterone replacement? Yes, it will, at least at first. Will your testosterone production return with time? Generally it does. It, it improves and it improves to something between something around your baseline. But what is your baseline? Well, if you didn't make any changes besides getting on the testosterone and then getting off the testosterone, generally that means it'll go back to your baseline, which was low to begin with. And so you'll get res re return of those symptoms that you initially started the TRT for. So there's, you know, it's generally I would say while there's not definitive data on this, I think it would be difficult to maintain the testosterone levels at the same level after discontinuing TRT. The ideal situation in which your T stays where it is would mean that you got the TRT, it gave you more energy and motivation, you use that time, energy, motivation to improve your lifestyle and habits with diet, exercise, you're taking care, better care of yourself, you've lost weight, you're in the best shape of your life, this seeps into the rest of your life, and then your mental health and your relationships are better, your, your life's better. So your system, your physical system, is in a better equilibrium now than it was when you initially started the testosterone replacement. So theoretically, your system would be able to maintain a higher baseline testosterone level such that when if you came off of testosterone, the your body would be able to make testosterone at a higher set point than previously. That's very hard though. It's hard to, to put in the work. Um, this is an ideal situation. And unfortunately, the nature of hard work, the nature of hard things is that they're hard. So most people are unable to put in the work. So most patients who get on TRT will generally need lifelong TRT to maintain these normal levels or go back to baseline low testosterone levels. So um, in conclusion, today I share with you how urologists determine if you have low testosterone. Uh, treat, I reviewed treatment options, I reviewed implications of treatment, and that's the standard approach we follow. So let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on TRT? Have you ever tried it? Any experience with it? Um, coming, on, coming on to it? Getting off of it? Let me know in the comments. And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Ha, ha, ha.